welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we are on classic Sudoku. Um, one of the reasons we don't do classic Sudoku that often on the channel is it is very hard to get hold of good quality classic Sudokus, uh, by which I mean um, puzzles that have some difficult, beautiful logic in them, but are solvable by human beings. We're not interested in Bowman's bingo on the channel. We want to find beautiful patterns. Now, one of the very, very best constructors of classic Sudoku in the world, in fact, of any Sudoku, to be honest, is Sam Kappelman Lines. He's a member of the UK Sudoku team. He's also um, just sort of completely aced the British TV series Countdown, if, you're, if you've ever watched that, um, proving that he's not only a genius with numbers, but also with letters as well. Um, and this puzzle is by Sam. Now, you know, that is all we need to know. We are in for an absolute treat today. The testers tell me that this is a work of sublime genius. So if you are, if you're looking to tune up your classic Sudoku skills, definitely give this one a try. Sam will, of course, be featuring in our uh, Cracking the Cryptic Greatest Hits book, which is currently um, our Kickstarter campaign. If you've not checked it out, do have a look at it. If you have checked it out and if you have supported it, obviously, thank you. But do make sure by the 31st of October, um, you get your votes in for the extra 10 puzzles because uh, we're going to have 10 bonus puzzles in the book selected by the community. Um, and I think 31st of October is the deadline. So um, do get over there and have a look. Um, I'll put a li link on the screen right there. Uh, obviously, it's also coming up to the end of the month, which means it's nearly the start of a new month. Things you learn on Cracking the Cryptic at the start of new months. Um, we release bonus Patreon content and we have been working on um, sort of a, a linked couple of Sudokus for you and they are going to be appearing on the 1st of November uh, and I'm sure that you're going to enjoy them. Um, we were working with testing them last night and yeah they're very interesting, not monstrously hard but as I say something to, to relish. Um, so yeah if you're a patron of the channel look out for that on the 1st of November. Now, let's get on to this one. Normal Sudoku rules apply. That's all I have to say. It's just classic. There's nothing complicated. Um, so the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And with that, I get to play. And I'm looking forward to this. Let's get cracking. Um, and in fact, look, Sam's given us a bit of a bonus. I can put a one in the grid straight away. That's just those ones interacting. And we can go... Can we do anything more? Yeah, we can put a one here as well. That's a one by Sudoku. That's a one. By, ah, in fact, we can get all the ones by Sudoku straight away. So that is generous. Two. Two must go here. Look, these twos are interacting. Wouldn't it be funny, actually, if one time the testers let through a puzzle that was actually completely trivial and I could just do it very, very quickly. That would be mildly amusing. It might not get many views, but um, it would make a change from the monsters I tend to be faced with. I have, I done, have I just done all the twos as well? I think I have. Um, okay, let's try and do all the threes. Well, I can do that three. That's definitely a three. Um, this can't keep going, I don't think. Look, three, ah, we get a three here as well. We get a three here, we get a three here. No, it does. I've done all the threes as well now. Good grief, okay. Um, well, so far, this, this is a very pleasant solve, but it's definitely not as hard as I was expecting. Let's see if that changes. Um, I should look at fours, perhaps. Oh, no, there's only one four in the grid. I shouldn't look at fours. Let's go on to fives. Um, fives are locked into one of two positions in box one. Three positions in box five, which I don't tend to notate in classic Sudoku. I will in variant Sudoku, but not in classics. I know fives, I think, are proving to be a bit of a dead end. Um, sixes then. Let's have a look at sixes. We got more than one. Yeah, we have got. Ah, we've got two sixes in the grid. They interact there and there. That gives us another pencil mark. And then sixes run dry as well. So sevens. We only got two. Se ah, seven. Look, that's nice. These sevens on box one are incredibly powerful. They force a seven into that square, which in turn means we can use our pencil marks to place a five here as well and the seven must live over on the right hand side there 
and the 5 must live in one of these squares. Very suspicious patterns emerging in this grid, but I'll come on to those if I need to. Um, eights, only one, ah, oh, no, two eights. We can lock an eight into one of those two squares, look, which means there must be an eight in one of these two squares. And zero nines in the grid. Okay, well, we can't really moan. Now, the thing that's caught my eye immediately here is look at this. We have, we've, uh, it doesn't quite work in row four, but we've certainly got some very similarly arranged um, digits in these rows. They, they almost perfectly occupy the same, the same columns of the grid, uh, which, uh, let me just stare at this for a second or two and see. Well, hmm. well, the first thing that I'm, I'm going to colour these in because that this certainly is interesting. This four is immediately interesting to me because the effect the four has are on row three and row nine. We we can instant one of the beautiful things about this pattern actually, and I'm sure it's deliberate knowing Sam, is that it's it's not hard to find this X wing. It's just there. Um, and what do I mean by an X-Wing? Well, where does the 4 go in row 3 of the grid? It can only go in one of those two squares. Where does the 4 go in row 9 of the grid? It can only go in one of those two squares. So this is an absolutely classic X-Wing. The 4 is locked into exactly two positions in row 3 and exactly the same two columns in row, row 9. And this means that we know that when we look at the finished solution, there are only two possible states of existence for the fours. If there was a four here when we looked at the finished solution, then look at row nine. Where would the four go? Well, there's only one place it could go. It would go there. And this would form one slash of the X. This is where the X wing gets its name. Because if the four is not in this position in the finished grid, it would have to be here. That's the only other place it can go in row three. Now, if the, if the four is here in row three, it would have to be here in row nine. It can only go into two positions and this forms the other slash of the X. So we, we now know that either there's a four here and here or there's a four here and here. And that immediately should be saying to us, okay, well, they, we can't possibly have a four in any of those yellow squares because we know that either this square or this square is a four in column one and either this square or this square is a four in column seven so there are no more fours possible we can eliminate fours from all of these squares and look this is absolutely beautiful because of the purple highlighting once we know that there is no four in this square we know there's no four in this square because of the four in the grid and we know there's no four in this square because of the x-wing so where does the four go in row four well there's only one position it can go in and that oh this i love this this makes you feel like the universe is in order like there is some purpose behind everything because look this being a four means i can color it in and well, inter alia, there's definitely now a swordfish on nines. There's no nine in any of the purple squares. But actually, ah, oh, no, there's something simpler. There's something simpler than a swordfish on nines. There's just an X-wing on eights. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look, look, I cannot impress upon you enough how beautiful this puzzle is. I mean, this is a puzzle they should use in Sudoku school to teach X-Wings and Swordfishes because this is so, it's just beautiful. Look at this eight. It works exactly the same way as the four up here. Exactly the same way. Uh, let me just get rid of the green highlighting. And let's think about where eight can go in, the, in, in these rows where I've got the purple highlighting because we can't put eight in any of those squares. Now, 
Therefore, looking at row three and four, where does the eight go? If we just look at these two rows, we know that the eight can only appear in the green cells. It can't appear here, remember, obviously none of the purple squares are the number eight. So again, we've got a perfect X-wing. We know when we look at the finished solution, we're either gonna see eights in those two positions, that's one possibility. The only other pos possibility is that we have eights in those positions. So what does this mean? Well, again, we can just eliminate eights from the rest of this column. Why does that matter? Well, look, we've pencil marked the eight down here. This tells us why it matters. This little square here cannot be an eight anymore. And if it can't be an eight, this square has to be an eight. And once this is an eight, this is a five, just unwinding our pencil marks again. And that means there's a five in one of those two squares. And that means That square's a six or a nine because there's a seven in the row. I'm just wondering if we've got... Oh no, I see what we've got. I see what we've got again. It just leads you. It, it takes you by the hand and it pulls you through the lessons you need to learn to understand advanced Sudoku, this puzzle. Because look at this box. We've got four, seven and nine to place in these squares. OK, that's what we've got. But remember, we had our X-Wing on fours. The X-Wing on fours was in... Uh, let me get rid of the X-Wing on eights. We don't need that anymore. I want to go back to my X-Wing on fours. So the fours were in this pattern. Now that means this little square here can't be a four because of the X-Wing. So we can eliminate four from this cell. So this square is a seven or a nine. Now... Now we can bring out our swordfish. This, I mean, this is the most obvious swordfish you'll ever see in your life because we can just, just look at the purple squares. They are perfectly arranged. There's no nine in any of them. So looking at these three rows now, let's ask where nines can go. Well, in row three, we can have one of those positions. In row four, one of those positions. In row nine, one of these positions. So in these three rows of the grid, the nines are locked into exactly three different columns. Therefore, we know each of these rows obviously needs a nine, so we know there's going to be three nines somehow disposed between the green cells, and we know we can't repeat a nine in a column, so it's not possible, for example, to go nine here and nine here. That very obviously doesn't work. So we need to arrange these three nines that must appear in these three rows of the grid in different columns. Now, I don't care how we do this. I don't care if it's like this. I don't care if it's like this. It can be any way we like. It doesn't matter to me because the fact is that I know that we can't put any more nines in these columns because the three nines that must appear in rows three, four and nine must consume the nines I need in columns one, four and seven of the grid. So I can't try and put a nine here, for example. If I put a nine here, now in these rows... There's only enough room for two nines because there are only two columns available for the nines. Now, why does this matter? Well, look at this square. This square cannot contain a nine. It's impossible. We know we can eliminate nines from all of these squares. So this is not nine. If it's not nine, well, we can see it must be seven, which means we can eliminate seven from those two squares. And... Perhaps we can go, do we need more cleverness now to finish the puzzle? Or are we actually going to find a way through it on our own? I'm just scanning. Yeah, no, 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 this is good. This is good. Why is it good? Well, these sevens here allow us to pencil sevens down there. And once I've got this seven in the grid, that forces a seven into this cell which forces a seven into this cell, which forces a seven into this cell, into this cell. Now look, we're going to be able to place a seven here, which gets us a six as well, unwinding our pencil marks. This square is a six now. And good grief, this puzzle. I mean, this is just, it's a perfect example 
of how how to use some of these advanced techniques to completely break open a difficult Sudoku. And what I love about it is it was so it's so telegraphed. It's very easy to spot what Sam has built into this puzzle. And uh, it's just, it's breathtaking, honestly. It is breathtaking. Oh, we finally got our nine in the grid look. Um, these two squares have got to be a six, eight pair to complete this box. Um, now, can we, can we keep going and keep the momentum up here? It was, it was really going quickly for a moment or two. Yes, we can. Look at row nine of the grid. We need to put four or nine into that square. And that one is a four. So we've got to go nine here. Once we go nine here, we place nine here. That gives us a nine here. We're starting to unwind our swordfish. By placing the four here, we are unwinding our X-wing. Where does the four go in row three of the grid now? It can't go in these two squares, so it has to go over there. This square now must be, what's that, a six, I think, to complete that. That means there's a six here, does it? Good grief. And now those two squares have got to be a four, nine pair. Let's put that in. That means these two squares have got to be six and eight, I think. Which means that square should be four. Four must live in one of these two squares. This square here is a nine now. That means nine is here. That almost ah, oh, we've now un we've now completely unwound the swordfish. Look, those were the actual positions of the nines that I said I didn't care about. Well, we didn't need to care about them. We just had to use the logic in the puzzle to finish it. Eight, and I think we have finished it now. There doesn't seem to be. It does. It just. It seems to be revealing its secrets to us, doesn't it? Um, these two squares, we must have a 9 in one of them. So this is a 5-9 pair. This must be a 6 or an 8 looking at the row. And there's an 8 here. So we get the 6. We get the 8. That's unwinding the X-wing that we found earlier. Actually, could, I could have done that instantly the moment I remembered it. 6 and 8 go in those two squares. These two squares are an 8-9 pair. This 8 tells us the order. That gives us the 9 and the 5. The 5 and the 4 get finished. The 5 gets placed here. That should be a four and is the four and the nine. Check. There you go. Absolutely world class, world class Sudoku setting from Sam Kaplan Lines. And, you know, as much pleasure as you can get from a puzzle. I absolutely loved that. It's just beautiful. And it's there for us all to find. We could find the X-Wing on fours. It was basically just shouting at us. And then the X-Wing on eights is shouting at us. And the swordfish, I even spotted the swordfish before I spotted the X-Wing on the eights. Um, ah, it's just, it really is sensational. I hope that you enjoyed it, even a fraction as much as I did. And of course, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.